OK, so we're going to look for points in 2D space where the distance between each pair of points is a rational number. So just for example, your 3, 4, 5 triangle, we take the points to be the vertices on here, so we've got the distance 3, 4 and 5. The distance between each of these points is a rational number, so this would satisfy our condition. There's a really nice way of doing this. If you allow all of your points to lie on a straight line, then we could just take, for example, the x-coordinate is rational and the y-coordinate is zero. Then you'll see that the distance between each of your pairs of points is a rational number. And we could even extend this to have maybe just one point off our line. And if we choose our points a little bit more carefully so that we always have nice Pythagorean triples here, we can choose these so that the distance is again going to be rational. We're going to have a look at a slightly more difficult version of this problem though, where we're saying that no three points are allowed to lie on the same straight line. So we're not allowed to have any three points which are collinear like this. And there's a really beautiful way of doing this, actually just using the unit circle and using some trigonometry. So if we take the unit circle, let's say we've got a point on it cos theta and sin theta, where theta is between 0 and 2 pi. This is our general point on the unit circle. And we know that because a circle can intersect a straight line in at most two points, we'll never have three points on a circle which are collinear. So this satisfies this criteria. The next thing we need to do is have a nice way of describing the distance between two points on the unit circle. So let's say we've got a point cos alpha, sine alpha, and we've got another point cos beta, sine alpha beta, we want a nice way of finding the distance between these two points so that we can choose our alphas and betas so that we have rational distances. We could just plug this into the distance formula. It gets quite nasty with the square root and having things squared. Instead, we're going to make use of a lot of trig identities. So the first thing we'll do is, if we just draw out a copy of the unit circle here, let's imagine that our original point with angles alpha and beta are perhaps somewhere over here. What we'll do is if I draw in the x-axis and the y-axis, we'll actually just rotate these points around. You see this preserves the distance between them. But we'll rotate these round so that now the distance between them is in the vertical direction. So this is particularly nice now because if we can work out what this angle is here, we can work out the y-coordinate, that's just sine of this angle. And then this gives it a really nice way of finding, in terms of alpha and beta, what is the distance between these two points. It's just a little bit more tidy this way. So we know that the distance between these two points hasn't changed when we've rotated it. The original angle between them was, let's say it was alpha minus beta or beta minus alpha. So this means that our angle between them, this small angle here, is just going to be alpha minus beta over 2, or perhaps beta minus alpha over 2. We need it to be positive. So that tells us then that this height here is just going to be sine of alpha minus beta over 2. And just to make sure that we're getting the positive value here, we take the absolute value of this. Then this deals with whether we need alpha minus beta or beta minus alpha. So that's our y coordinate, it's just sine of this angle here. So this tells us then that the distance between our two points is just two times this. So the distance is two times the absolute value of sine alpha minus beta over two. And that tells us our original distance then was two times the absolute value of sine alpha minus beta over two we can still put this into a slightly nicer form for us to work with. So using the angle subtraction formula for sine, we can write our distance between these two generic points and our circle as 2 times the absolute value of sine alpha over 2 cos beta over 2 minus cos alpha over 2 sine beta over 2. And this is particularly useful now because essentially the plan is we'll use the fact that this is our distance, we'll try and choose alpha and beta so that sine alpha over 2, cos beta over 2, each of these terms is itself rational. So how do we do this? Well, we can do this using another trig formula. So we're going to use essentially the t substitution. So if you let t be equal to tan theta over 2 in general, then this tells you that you get a nice way of expressing sine theta. We won't prove this, I'll include a link for this, but you can write sine theta as 2t over 1 plus t squared, show this using double angle formulas. And similarly, we can get a nice result for cos theta, which is 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. So this isn't particularly useful at the moment, because we're actually interested in sine theta over 2, essentially, there with our alphas and betas. But what we'll do is, instead of having t as tan theta over 2, let's take t to be tan theta over 4, then this gives us the same identities, but with sine theta over 2 and cos theta over 2. 
So here, if we choose our alpha and beta so that sine alpha over 2 is this, we essentially want to choose t, which is going to be rational, and this will work. So if t is rational, then 2t over 1 plus t squared is certainly going to be rational. That tells us that our sine of theta over 2 is rational, and similarly for our cos, cos of theta over 2 will be rational. So we choose alpha and beta so that tan alpha over 4 and tan beta over 4 are rational, then we can see that the distance between these two points is going to be rational. So we can actually wrap up at this point because all we need to do then is find for our set of points we'll take the x coordinate to be cos theta, the y coordinate to be sine theta, where we're sticking with theta between 0 and 2 pi. So these all lie on the circle and we're just going to impose the extra constraint here that tan theta over 4 has got to be rational and this tells us that using our t identities here sine theta over 2 and cos theta over 2 are going to be rational for all of these so whenever we take any pair of points lying on this circle so long as tan theta over 4 is rational the distance between them is also going to be rational. So the only thing to check here is have we actually got infinitely many points because we know that because these all lie on a circle no three of them are going to be collinear but if we just draw a quick sketch of the graph y equals tan theta over 4 you'll see that we actually pass through all of the different rational numbers here, so we certainly get infinitely many points. So there we go, we've shown that there is a set of infinitely many points in R2, and no three of them are allowed to be collinear, but we've still got infinitely many of them, and the distance between each pair of points is a rational number.